This is Danny Flexen here for Seconds Out. Delighted to be joined by top promoter Dimitri Salita. Dimitri, how are you? I'm doing great. Glad to hear it. Now, we're going to talk about a fight that's just been confirmed for your heavyweight, Jermaine Franklin. But before we do, I just want to get your reflections on the event that took place in the UK uh, just this past weekend. We saw, uh, I think, slightly against your prediction, you didn't go outright and say Franchon Cruz de Zern would retain against Savannah Marshall, but you seem to be edging in that direction. But she uh, fell short and lost her titles to Savannah Marshall. What, what did you make of the fight itself and Savannah's performance? It was a competitive fight, but I expected more, and I think everybody did. I feel like, from what I see, the weight does not really help Savannah. She didn't look stronger or sharper. To me, the best she's ever looked was in her loss to Clarissa Shields. I mean, that was a high-level competitive fight, a great fight, one of the best fights live that I've ever seen. This fight with Savannah Marshall and Frank Cruz did not live up to the expectations. And uh, a win is a win. Frank is a tough fighter and a tough competitor. It's interesting that when they were announcing the fighters, Savannah was uh, 11 or 12 and one, and Frank was nine and one, and that one. To the girl that was sitting ringside, Clarissa Shields. To the champion that was sitting ringside, Clarissa Shields. So that was quite ironic. But, uh, I mean, obviously the dislike between both of them is real. And there seems to be a significant amount of fan interest in this fight and media interest. It's just great for this fight and great for women's boxing. So, you know, we'll, we'll explore and see if we can make it happen. Well, that's what everyone wants to know now, I guess. Will we see the rematch? And if so, will it be next for Clarissa? We'll explore it. We'll see what kind of makes sense. You know, Clarissa did incredibly well at Little Seas Arena in Detroit. And she did go to the UK to challenge Savannah Marshall in her home country in London. So all things being equal, I feel like it's Savannah's turn to cross the ocean and come to Detroit. And it's a relatively short, direct flight from Heathrow Airport to DJW Detroit. And... Um, you know, Detroit is coming back as a big fight town, and uh, I'm sure that it's a nice thing for, for Savannah to, to have checked uh, on her um, on her resume. I mean, I mean, she's never really fought in the United States as a champion or as a tough fighter. I think only her pro debut was in the United States uh, on the Mayweather McGregor card, maybe. Was that it? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. And uh, so now that she's champion again, I think uh, that it will be great for her to come to the U.S. And I really believe that for, for for many of the big mega fights, when the U.K. fighters come to the U.S., there's loads of fans that come with them. And again, it's a, it's a direct short flight. Detroit is a great fight town. And I really believe that it will be a very special event. But, uh, uh, you know, it will be pretty awesome for this rematch to happen. And uh, hopefully both sides can come. We're always very reasonable. And I work with everybody. We made the first fight, and I, and I believe that as long as there's intent and good faith on the other side, we'll be able to to, to, to take the steps towards that, in that direction. I think there is a slight issue in that we spoke to uh, Savannah's trainer, Peter Fury, after the fight, and it's pretty widely known now that he can't enter the United States uh, for things that have happened in his past prevent him from being allowed access. If Savannah were to take the rematch in the US, it would have to be without Peter in her corner. Is that something you're, you know, you're sensitive to? Do you have sympathy for that um, problem? I do have sympathy because I think Peter Fury is a great boxing guy and one of the best trainers, one of the best boxing minds in the sport. And I've said it uh, often and loudly. He, he, he is really responsible for being Savannah's good achievement and, and a lot of credit to him. Uh, but there have been other times when this situation happened in the big fights and trainers are able to make it, and he will be able to spend the whole training camp with Savannah. I'm sure there are people in that camp who will do a good job, uh, you know, helping Savannah in the corner. But with, I, I, I am sensitive to it. But with that being said, I represent Clarissa Shields, and you know, at the end of the day. Other forces will kind of determine what may, what's most, most favorable for the fight to happen. And actually, one of the reasons why the first fight happened, one of, why the first fight happened in the first place in the UK, is because when Clarissa, you know, when we were exploring this possibility for years, this is one. This was one of the reasons that 
Savannah said he can do it in the U.S. And we respected it and we didn't do it. But now Clarissa has that victory. It's really for Savannah to, you know, if, 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 um, uh, if Savannah, if that, if that loss really irks her and is digging, you know, is, is, is really, you know, uh, preventing her from, from, from being at peace with herself and she wants to do her best and, and do it in the rematch, she has to do what she has to do to make it happen. And uh, if that means coming to the United States, then, then so be it. But obviously, I can't speak for Savannah. I can't speak for for for, uh, for a camp. Um, they'll make the best decision and they'll do whatever's right for them. But certainly, taking all things in consideration, a fight in the United States with with a promotional tour in the UK and then with a promotional tour in the United States, hopefully having real broadcasts behind it on both coasts will be really tremendous and will elevate women's sports and women's boxing to yet another level. And if it were to take place in the US, would that mean that it would be on the zone, or is there still a chance it could be on Sky Sports as the first fight was? No, it doesn't have to be on the zone. We are we are uh, a network free agent. We did that fight with the zone. Clarissa is actually one of the few fighters in the sport of boxing who's really fought on every network. She fought on HBO, she fought on Showtime, she fought on the zone, she fought on ESPN in the last fight. So uh, the one before last fight. So so. Uh, Whatever makes the most sense, whatever gives the fight the most visibility and is financially most feasible, I believe that's the option that we'll go with. And it's something that we should discuss together. If the, if the image is to be made, it's something that uh, we're open to discussing together and making the best financial decision for the fight, because obviously that's a big part of it. But I do want to say that at the gate, Larissa Ford didn't really fight a big name uh, in June Thursday in Detroit. And it was really a tremendous, tremendous crowd. And also Savannah likes to make fun of Clarissa. Hoping I heard that she doesn't sell tickets, but you know, just it's not like he said, she said. Look at the video and look at the ring walkout, and and uh, it was really a tremendous night. And fans came out, and this event, I believe that that building is going to have twenty thousand fans, and it'll be electric. Excellent. Like it was in the O2, like like it was in the O2 arena when Teresa traveled thousands of miles away from home to go into avenge that fight, to avenge that loss. That amateur loss, which really wasn't a loss, if you really think about it, and if you look at the fight, but okay, we'll take it. She came to, to, to the UK, she came to the O2 Arena, from, and was booed when she was walking to the ring, and then was was uh, clapped for when uh, and applauded for when when the fight was done. So Savannah's turn, and we'll obviously we'll give the team and Savannah all the respect and, and neutrality, and uh, and she'll have all the all the uh, all the A level accommodations that that, that a fighter like her should have. And just uh, switching tracks, we're looking ahead now to a return for your heavyweight, Jermaine Franklin, next week uh, on the uh, card of the rematch between Alicia Baumgardner and Christine Linodatu uh, in Detroit, of course. And uh, it's good to see him back on the left-hand side of the bill after those two big fights, which got him a lot of exposure. And, and a lot of people thought he was unlucky in the first one against Dillian White. Uh, and then Anthony Joshua took him the distance, of course. Yeah, so I think that Jermaine grew and got better as a result of those fights. He stayed in the gym, and uh, we got the call a couple of weeks ago, so he didn't really have a big full camp for this fight. But he was in the gym, and he didn't find back-to-back. So his trainer said this is a good opportunity, obviously close to Saginaw, Michigan. He short it to, to Saginaw, about one and a half, two-hour drive. So it just made a lot of sense uh, for Jermaine to fight. And, and actually, Junior Wright is one of the first fighters that I ever signed uh, in 2014. So it's quite ironic. Full circle for him. Good tough fighter for the Cruiserweight World Title. Fought for the Cruiserweight World Title two times. Had Babel Shumanov down. So it's 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 a respectable good fight for Jermaine. And I do believe that the heavyweight division is is in a bit of a flux. I mean, Joshua is fighting White seems, seems like. Then there seems to be a fight with Joshua and Wilder sometime late this year, early next year. But you know, it's in flux again, and Tyson Fury is fighting East Six possibly, and maybe he's fighting in September, October, or August. So, uh, you know, Jermaine with a win, and it was an impressive win. I believe put himself right into that picture, and if he wants, a big fight will be there waiting for him. The other thing that I want to say is that, you know, I've been working to bring back consistent championship boxing uh, to the city of Detroit for a long time, and we've had significant events to our many events to our Detroit World Boxing Series. 
and it was all really coming together. June 3rd, we had Clarissa at the big building of uh, Little Caesars, and uh, now we have uh, Alicia Baumgarten, ironically also a woman, right? Uh, fighting down the block at the Masonic Temple, also a nice venue, not as big as Little Caesars, but a nice venue. And, uh, uh, you know, Detroit has such a rich boxing history with so many great fighters. Uh, so that, that it's great to see that it's coming back and that there's other promoters coming to Detroit City to do business. I mean, I have Jermaine on the card. It's a maximum show. And I always say boxing has to be, for the sport to grow, boxing has to be inclusive. Not exclusive, but inclusive. And I'm very grateful that in the city of Detroit, we're able to, uh, sh- to, to showcase that uh, inclusivity and uh, uh and put on a great and put on a great event, and, and it's going to be a great fight and a great night. I have to ask you, given uh, Jermaine's last two fights have been against Joshua and Dillian White, and as you pointed out, it looks like they're going to clash again on the twelfth of August. Who do you? How do you assess that rematch, and who do you like in that fight? I mean, we know Jermaine pushed Dillian White all the way. Whether you consider he was hard done by or not, it was certainly very close. And then fell short against Joshua, but certainly gave him problems. I think Joshua has more attack than Dylan White does. I think that uh, he beat him twice before. This is the third fight, yeah? Uh, well, they, the first fight was in the amateurs, and then they've had one in the pros. Oh, one in the pros, right. So um, I believe that uh, uh, Joshua has more attack. I believe that he's had more notice to get ready for the fight, so he's been in camp for a longer time. He's obviously had a fight since... Um, uh, had a fight recently, uh, doing right a little bit further back. So, uh, you know, for those reasons, I believe that um, that uh, uh, Joshua is a favorite. I mean, you know, Joshua is a great fighter and accomplished so much in his career. So, um, you know, I, I believe that it makes sense for him to fight other big names that are not guys that are on the come up, that are young contenders, that are hungry. You know, we try to make, as you know, Jarrell Miller suggested him and Oral Whalen. Uh, both of those fights, I believe, would have been challenging and interesting. Mm-hmm. And Jarrell, although, you know, we all know about the past, but there's still a significant amount of interest in him and a significant amount of interest in his story, and particularly in that fight. And the amount of media that he's received and we've received, even with the rumors of the fight, is really incredible. So, uh, you know, maybe down the line, it is something that happens. Uh, Oral Whalen, Tough guy to make a big fight for because he gave Tyson Fury the toughest fight of his career. He's a southpaw, slick guy, and uh, you know stayed busy for three times last year, uh, and is really working on walking himself into the right opportunity. Yeah, I guess with guys like him, and, and also with Jermaine to an extent now, is getting him into those high rankings positions with the sanctioning bodies because no one's going to take those fights unless there's something big on the line. Right. Well, Otto is rated in the top ten in, in all the organizations. Uh, Jermaine is not, but I believe with this win he will be. Uh, um, and uh, and I do believe that if he looks good, he'll he'll uh, walk himself into another big big fight opportunity. And think about Jermaine, as you can see, he's still getting better. I mean, he could have beaten Joshua. He just didn't have the experience to really figure out what was going on uh, in the ring and kind of react to it. But there were times when Joshua didn't want to fight, and Jermaine, you know, just didn't. Uh, didn't know how to read that and how to react to it in a constructive way. But it's a good learning experience for him. He didn't get hurt. He showed again that he has a good chin, that he wants to fight, that he likes to fight, that he's willing to go thousands of miles away from home for the challenge. So these are all really significant signs in a, in a good fighter. And Jermaine is very hungry and uh, I believe he's going to put on a very good performance in July 16th. Great stuff. Dimitri, always an absolute pleasure to have you on the channel. And uh, we look forward to seeing the return of Jermaine Franklin next week. And then, yeah, we'll all keep our fingers crossed that you guys manage to get the uh, Shields Marshall rematch over the line. Great, thank you.